The Multimedia Ninja Podcast, Episode 35. Hello again and welcome to The Multimedia Ninja Podcast, where it's all about surviving and thriving in the digital convergence. My name is Bradford Rogers and I'll be interviewing some multimedia ninjas who are making things happen in their respective fields and sharing tips, tools, and insights for multimedia artists and content creators. As always, you can find show notes at themultimedianinja.com. This week, globe-trotting mastering engineer, Mr. Glenn Schick. As you may know, in this podcast series, my friends and I will be talking about all things multimedia, including creativity, shaping your ideas, and how to be more productive doing it, regardless of what kind of content you're creating. We have got an exciting episode for you today, so what do you say we just let's get to it? What's up, ninjas? Hey, I'm going to get right into it pretty quick because we have my good friend, Mr. Glenn Schick uh, from Thailand on the Skype line. I uh, just wanted to make a little note uh, that a lot of you can relate to. I uh, just did a tutorial that you can find at the Multimedia Ninja YouTube channel. By the time you get this, it should be a public link, which I'll put in this episode if I don't have a senior moment. Um, but it's on how to use the uh, USB Duet, excuse me, the Apogee Duet, along with my laptop for the mobile podcasting rig. And uh, I actually uh, made that for my friend Carnus Jackson, who you can find in like episodes, I forget, uh, just search Carnus, C A R N E S E. Uh, on the multimedia ninja.com and uh, anyway I was doing a tutorial for him on uh, how I do the mobile podcasting uh, rig with my laptop and the Apogee Duet uh, USB and I use a little patch cable to go one thing into another thing and um, because the Duet USB has a dedicated uh, headphone out uh, on which I can map to output three and four in Ableton and it has also two regular outputs and two other inputs. I'm able to do a thing that works for mobile podcasting with my laptop is a short story. The whole point was where we can have a Skype guest um, and get separate audio for the guest and the host. So anyway, that brings me to this morning, 10 a.m., uh, just before 10 a.m. Eastern Time here in the U.S., which was 10 p.m. Uh, in Thailand, where I was getting ready to do an interview with Glenn. Uh, and after going through all of this with Carnus, this is my point here, after going through all this, uh, I made the tutorial for how to use my Apogee Duet uh, for doing a Skype remote interview uh, and I uh, did the tutorial, so I, I clearly know how to do it with my gear, and I even have a template set up in Ableton, and so what do I do? I decide to go back to my desktop setup in the red room here, which uses an Apogee Symphony, like 16 in and out interface and a patch bay um, and a different template in Ableton to uh, make that happen. And so I start plugging in stuff a few minutes before the podcast. I, first, I set up the cameras and I got two little Kodak uh, play sports. I got one from my good friend, Timothy P. Green, actually his, uh, his significant other. Um, and it was so cool that I, uh, she didn't want to use it. So, um, and didn't have a use for it and was kind enough to donate it to me. And, uh, uh, well, actually more like a gift, uh, Christmas, I believe. And, uh, I was like, this is awesome. So I went out and actually found another one for like, you know, 25 bucks. They're usually like a hundred or 200 or something. I found one for 25 bucks, a second one on uh, eBay used. And so I had those two set up, got those working, make sure they're happening. And I'm starting to plug in stuff to try and patch in Skype, on the uh, patch bay here, right, of course, leading up, even though I got up at 6 a.m., I'm the last second leading up to trying to do this Skype call at 10 a.m. to Thailand. I'm plugging in stuff. I'm getting echoes. I'm getting feedback. And Glenn's like, uh, you ready, dude? And I'm, uh, uh, <laughs> I'm like, okay, how about I just switch back to the laptop and we'll go that way. So anyway, that's what we ended up doing. 
And uh, by the way, if I happen to be looking down some of the time, I'm looking at the uh, the picture, the video of Glenn there in Thailand. So uh, I don't know what that's going to look like. But now that we got all that sort of preamble out of the way, I just thought you might be interested in that because it's typical of, as I mentioned to Glenn, I think off camera, Some sometimes the corollary of being a multimedia ninja is that you cannot always have things set up the same way. But I certainly could have. If I had just chosen to go with the laptop thing that I had just done a tutorial on and use that and had a template for, it's just I was trying to do some stuff with the desktop and laptop with more cameras and video cameras and whatever. But nonetheless, I finally wised up, went back to the laptop, and here is the interview with my friend, uh, former uh, Atlanta Chapter Recording Academy uh, president and a trustee and an awesome mastering guy for names you have heard of like crazy, all the way from Thailand, Mr. Glenn Schick. What's shaking, man? <laughs> oh, you know, lots of things are shaking. Uh, you know, <laughs> Thailand is uh, seismic, so uh, lots ah. of things shake occasionally here, so... By the way, the Admiral is uh, very much interested in traveling there, and uh, I, I told her that we'll have to sail, but uh, she's still interested. <laughs> so, uh, the uh, Sea of Tonkin, I heard, is quite lovely. So. Oh, cool. So now you are, are you near Phuket, or? No, I'm near no Thai beaches because uh, I can't swim, uh, and I like the water. I like being near the water, right? Uh, but I like being in water. So, gotcha. Um, I am up in the mountains in Chiang Mai, Thailand right now. Oh, right on. And, uh, yeah, so I uh, <laughs> I thought you had gone on walkabout, but it turns out you're expanding the whole, or I should say contracting in a good way, the whole mastering thing. And uh, there's some uh, lovely articles on uh, Plugin Alliance about this, but uh, basically you are now sitting with your feet propped up on a beach mastering uh, world-famous records. That's the gist of it. Uh, figuratively, uh, like I said, I'm not. Uh, oh yeah, beach. sorry, yeah, yeah. <laughs> can't get that uh, out of my head. Facing a mountain and right. uh, uh, looking over the lovely mountain Doi Saket right now, or Doi Sutep, I think it's actually called. But oh, right. Um, so uh, no, actually, kind of expanding the brand, not contracting. It's uh, uh, it's been really interesting. I've gone uh, global instead of uh, uh, kind of staying in our old Atlanta market yeah, that I was yeah. in. 20 some odd years. So, uh, um, it's quite the change. Yeah. And I, I mean, contracting in the good way, because this actually leads to why you are the perfect guest and, and a hero of mine, because I am incredibly, now that I've gone and built out a studio and everything, I am, uh, seriously enthralled with the whole idea of the digital nomad, uh, kind of lifestyle, if you will. Um, which you are, in, you are just I live killing in a it. Digital nomad community. So <laughs> right. Like everyone around here is a uh, publisher or uh, a, you know a web person or a some internet related something. But uh, yeah, I, I, I'm the only one that does music in that field. But uh, yeah, many digital nomads here. So. Oh, right on. So I assume uh, one of the perks of your location is uh, that you have good internet. Uh, <laughs> it works. Uh, you know, that's debatable. I, I'm only here, uh, I've been here for a few months, and uh, I'm about to relocate to uh, uh, Korea, which is the ah. fastest internet in the planet. Right. Uh, and I'd be very happy to be there. But uh, Thailand has a little to be desired in internet connectivity, shall gotcha. we say. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Well, at least I see you on video, and the uh, the audio is not uh, doesn't sound totally underwater, so that's good. <laughs> that's the positive. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, actually, we uh, we go way the hell on back to uh, I, well, I won't give away our age, but uh, my first album, mm -hmm. Jihad, which you were at, uh, actually located in the annex to Exocet Studios um, down here in back Atlanta. In the, yes. Yeah, and. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so you, uh, I was, uh, that's the point I was learning that there is such a thing as mastering <laughs> that needs to be done after, uh, after you're finished, you think with the record and, uh, just for a little sample of back in the day, um, uh, although I know there are so many more projects 
that have been done after this, but uh, let's just have a little sample of the track It's a Living uh, from my first CD, Jihad. Uh, and if you don't know what the hell that's all about, uh, it's probably not what you think. Go back to episode number eight with Scott Patton, and uh, I think there's a full explanation there. But here is It's a Living. Your chin must have hurt pretty bad where it hit the floor. Your hair, your clothes, and everything about you. She did you just the same. Hello, young lovers, step out from your dreams. Be first in line to take your poison by degrees. Do you want some money? Welcome to the game. You call me baby sometimes. What's in a name? Well, your man don't think it's funny when the line goes dead And did you tell him all the things we did in bed? You shut your eyes and tell me It's living champagne and your clothes laying on the floor He don't know your real name He doesn't even know a dozen things about you With your Armani dreams When you get there you'll find it's not all that it seems Did you want to be famous? When did you lose the game? They call you happy sometimes What's in a name? You tell her you don't think it's funny When the line goes dead And in your eyes she sees it's the unknown that you dread It's like a mashup of uh, an homage to William S. Burroughs, a little uh, Don Henley, ironic vibe, and the excellent uh, skills of uh, Mr. Glenn Schick. Although I should point out, uh, 
General Patton did an en- enormous job with uh, with the tracking and mixing and getting me in a pre auto tune age to sound worth a crap. <laughs> but Scott uh, Patton is a brilliant dude, and uh, I miss that guy. And I'm very happy he's been quite successful with uh, his uh, recent endeavors of the last few years. But uh, uh, yeah, no, luckily to have uh, gotten with Scott, and uh, you know, it, it was a fun project. So. And uh, that that's a perfect segue. Uh, maybe you can uh, give the listening audience a, a little uh, thumbnail sketch of how you, well, actually, maybe how you got started even before Exocet and how you got through from there to uh, to Midtown to uh, Thailand <laughs> and, um, and the epiphany. A bridge between those two things. Uh, so, ah, ah um, the land I bridge. I guess uh, going back to start, a musician mm-hmm. and uh, played bass and guitar and played in zillions of bands from New York City where I grew up. And then um, in New York, I started uh, tracking when I started working for some hip hop record companies like B Boy Records. And um, so I started learning how to track. Uh, with my old pal Spider D, uh-huh. and uh, we tracked uh, uh, hip hop music and uh, all kinds of stuff at Power Play Studios in Queens, New York. Yes, uh-huh. and um, so I became a mixing engineer after that and a producer. And we did many of the acts that were on the label at the time. And uh, cut to I don't know, 16 years into my kind of mixing, playing, producing life. And um, I had a mentor uh, named Jeff Glicksman, who was uh, quite a well-known producer, um, who did uh, Black Sabbath and ELO and uh, many uh, famous acts that I used to uh, uh, assist with on his mixes. And Mm. um, he brought over to my studio a Neumann rack of EQs and compressors and said, try this. You would be really good at this. And Mm. uh, I said... Ah. And um, he uh, said, no, really, you should try it. And uh, I did. And I tried it on some clients that I was mixing at the time. And they were just so happy. And uh, I hadn't a clue of what I was doing. Um, And um, I was like, this is way fun, more fun than mixing. And uh, (laughs) that's kind of how my entrance into the mastering world came. And uh, you know, here I am 22 years later, uh, and uh, I'm finally starting to get okay at it. So. Uh, yeah, I think better than that. Uh, now, I, you, you had Glenn Schick mastering, and then I don't know if there's an interim location between Exocet and down at um, Ellsworth. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. No, no, there were several locations uh-huh. we had in Atlanta. Uh, we were in Shallowford Road uh, in Chambly for 10 years. And uh, then we moved to, um, uh, I think we were in Crossover Studios for like a year. Oh, okay. And, and then I built uh, a studio over on Fairmont Avenue in the Chattahoochee Industrial, uh, which was this beautiful, massive studio that we had like our Naris events and things at. Right. And um, uh, then I built another studio uh, in the old Axis Studios in Atlanta, which is still the oldest standing studio uh, in Atlanta that was built in 62, which happens ah. to actually correspond with my age. So. Ah, now we know. And, and <laughs> yeah. uh, Axis is the one right next to Crossover. Exactly. Okay, which is uh, where you mastered my second and most recent album, Guiro. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and uh, thank you for uh, that segue, because now I think we can demo the song All Blues, uh, which is a Miles Davis bit, although... Most of the things original, but uh, the album EP. But uh, here's all blues. I'll shut up and then we'll be right back after this.
Sean O'Rourke on the drums there, giving the groove. And, uh, That's Sean. <laughs> yeah, Joe Rita, Billy Wilkie, awesome. Uh, and, yeah, so I was over there at the former Axis Studios location. Um, and then uh, where where came the epiphany uh, to become the digital nomad? So um, as you may know, because you're a Naris kind of guy, ah. um, when I was serving my Atlanta – uh, chapter Naris duties, right. which included uh, president and trustee yes. and 
E&E, wing chair, and many things uh, at that time and those years. Uh, I would go out to Los Angeles to go for our meetings, and uh, I would get a call from my office in Atlanta, and they would say, oh, Chris Brown wants to do a single, and he needs it in an hour. <laughs> and I would go, oh, that really sucks. Yeah. <laughs> I hate the fact I am going to miss this gig, and uh, God, I really wish I had some kind of little portable system um, to kind of do mastering on. Mm -hmm. So. There lies the germ of where that started because I would see some of my uh, producer and engineer cohorts actually between meetings mixing on a laptop, uh, uh -huh. you know, very well-known uh, engineers that would be sitting there on their laptop right. and be mixing a session and I was really jealous of this and uh, I was like, you know, I've never really been traditional in the way I do things. so you know, mm -hmm. let me figure out a way to do this. And um, so I started setting up a portable rig that was just going to be for emergency stuff right. that I could take traveling. And it's turned into my life. So <laughs> uh, uh, it's been quite a metamorphosis. And I am jam jealous of that because of, uh, <laughs> <laughs> of course, we have the mobile research vessel, uh, JC Sales. Um, mm -hmm, of which, course. of course, I think uh, World Songs Media needs to, needs to purchase soon, given the amount that I'm using it for podcasting and stuff. In fact, Guiro that I that you mastered for me that was uh, it was tracked various places, um, you know, some real studios and some at my place. But when it came down to mixing, I still could have like an 80, uh, 80 track session on the laptop, which is actually where I mixed it. And uh, as long as you have a uh, stereo interface to, you know, get you what you need. Um, you can either plug into the available studio monitors or, um, you know, I could already certainly get in the ballpark with the headphones. Um, but those are no match for what I gather you are using, which is the awesome in-ear monitors. Is that, is that correct? I've gone through a process. So ah. nothing has been kind of, you know, plug and play because, what I'm doing has no, uh, uh, there's there's no kind of uh, example or anything to kind of follow. Uh, you know, most uh, engineers read in Tape Op or Mix Magazine and they go, oh, God, yeah, here's what Dave Pensado uses and here's what blah, blah, blah uses. And, mm -hmm. yeah, I'll get those monitors and that set up. But everything I'm doing right now has no precedent. So, um, you know, much like the way I kind of taught myself how to master, I had to figure out how to do proper monitoring in a non-acoustically right room. Um, so I eliminated the acoustics. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, that has been a life-changing moment. Right. And, uh, you know, I can now repeat uh, perfect monitoring anywhere I go, mm -hmm. uh, which just lets me travel and do all these wonderful things so awesome so now you when you say you're removing the environment um so you're still uh you're still on the in-ear plan right i work with uh custom in-ear monitors mm -hmm. uh they start with uh some stuff that i've been refining over the last four years mm -hmm. and uh some of them include you know several sets but uh ones i've modified and uh ones that include even up to 12 speakers in each one of my ears <laughs> wow and um you know i've been playing with uh monitoring techniques and um you know different in-ears and different crossovers and all kinds of things but uh um, more than anything the techniques i've kind of pioneered have really let me do work in a way that i never imagined i could have all right and so, um, and I suppose you can't buy those at Guitar Center. <laughs> well, you Not can buy like some good stuff. You know, there's there's companies like uh, JH Audio and Ultimate Ears. Yes, and, sir. Uh, uh, 1964 and a bunch of other good companies that make great in-ear monitors, uh, but you know. Uh, you're not going to be able to just go buy a pair and do what I do. Um, you're welcome to try. Right. Uh, but, um, but please don't. Know, <laughs> no, no, please do. I mean, honestly, uh, uh, I encourage people to, to kind of go do their thing. It's mm -hmm. free my life up. So, uh, um, no, people should. And, uh, you know, I, I post this all the time um, that 
um, your fellow engineers shouldn't be your competitors. They should right. be your comrades. Mm -hmm. And uh, I very much believe in that. And I try to share with people and I try to not, you know, say this is some big industry secret. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this is a result of work. Yeah. Well, and that, that uh, buddy of mine uh, made an observation when you were talking about the Recording Academy or NARIS, uh National Academy yeah. for Recording Arts and Sciences. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he, he noticed, he said, you know, man, uh, he joined and he said, uh, you know, uh, it seems like you're when you're gigging around town and stuff, it's like uh, everybody's all cutthroat and it's a zero sum game. He didn't use that phrase, but uh, he said, you know, and I, I, uh, I, joined the Atlanta chapter of the Recording Academy, and, and it's like all of a sudden people actually want to share and be helpful. And it's it's uh, totally different than what he was was used to in the the local scene, as it were. So I think you when you uh, also dovetails with what I'm reading now, but uh, when you work from a position of abundance and uh, you know helping with other people. Um, mm -hmm. it's a, it's a nice thing. No, uh, it's, it's great to like, you know, help people and give back and, uh, you know, bring your fellow engineers along with you and the good people will rise to the top and the bad people will sink to the bottom. But, uh, um, you know, it, it you really want to be somebody that helps people grow. Right. That's, that's, right. that's you know, that's the best thing you can do. And this, uh, all this newfangled digital technology is done done the same in that you know every the barriers to entry are not there anymore and anybody that wants to can pretty much record uh their material and again what's strong will will float to the top and <laughs> what's uh it's what's not the result of it anymore yeah that's for yeah sure. so yeah i have a terrible story about my uh any about in-ears too i had the ultimate ear nines i think for uh live uh -huh. purposes and right. Right. uh to be short, I left them on a plane and nobody returned them, and uh, I am still waiting to get some more. But the uh, the immediacy of those things compared to, in the case of live uh, monitoring, compared to wedges, you know, it's like it's it's in your brain. <laughs> yeah, and, a, and you know the 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 the, the built-in factor of you know even if you turn them up, you're not going to hurt yourself nearly as bad as you know 130 decibels blasting at you with some you know sharp tune frequency uh yeah it's it's, right. it's a much thing so well that that brings up a question do yours have any built-in limiter and or do they have uh do you need any external module for, as far as crossover or anything else to go with them um they don't have built-in limiting because that would really affect the audio so mm. uh no they don't but uh and i do have very good amplification and things like that uh, but, uh, no, they're just, you know, kind of, uh, uh, a, uh, a ev evolution of things that I've used for, uh, many years. And I use several different in-ears now as, uh, uh, part of my repertoire. Okay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it's not, uh, just one thing, but, uh. Um, yeah, they, and it keeps getting better every year. So do you do you have the rap pair and the classical pair? And <laughs> although I don't I don't know that you do much classical, but the uh, you know different. Actually, I'm doing an orchestral album right now from uh, the violinist from Macklemore uh, ah. um, and um, Andrew Jocelyn, who's also a buddy of mine from Seattle. And cool. uh, yeah, yeah, he's doing a, a really interesting orchestral album. He's a violinist. And even though he plays in a hip hop group, he's uh, you know he's a classical violinist and a, quite a great musician. Yeah. So uh, yeah, no, I, I do kind of a, a lot of eclectic stuff, including all of my uh, wonderful groups in Iceland that I work with. Ah. And, uh, Are there any genres you have not done? Um, you know, I think at this point I've probably crossed every path at least once. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, uh, uh, needless to say that the country and classical worlds don't clamor for uh, guys that are more known for pop or rock or hip-hop. Uh, they have their specialty guys and kind of stay in those genres. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, But, you know, I've done everything after, you know, God, you know, I opened my business 22 years ago. So, yeah, it's been a while. Right. Well, do you have a favorite genre to work with or? Yes, uh, good. Okay. Uh, yeah, honestly, if anything's like good with good material and well done and has some 
part in it, mm -hmm. it makes my job so much nicer. So. Nice. Do you have a little time to come back next episode and we can uh, talk a little b more about mastering? Uh, absolutely. Cool. Well, uh, folks, stay tuned to the next episode. We will be back with Mr. Glenn Schick. Y'all give him a hand from Thailand. Awesome. Mr. Glenn Schick. Well, that just about wraps it up for this week's episode of The Multimedia Ninja. I hope you'll come back next week and bring your friends. Uh, don't forget you can subscribe to The Multimedia Audio Podcast right there at TheMultimediaNinja.com uh, or just look it up in iTunes, The Multimedia Ninja. We also have a YouTube channel and I'd love for you to check out the video version and you can subscribe to that right there at YouTube as well and of course you can find all of these subscribe links links to other material blog posts and all kind of cool stuff at the multimedia ninja.com uh, don't forget as a last uh, mention that uh, i do still indeed provide uh, audio video and all kind of multimedia consulting services if you or someone you know has any need in that regard or any questions just hit me up at themultimedianinja.com and there's a contact tab there uh, i do also monitor the comments in the uh, various blog posts and episodes so with that i'm gonna go have me a protein shake and we'll be back next week with another installment of the multimedia ninja with glenn schick